this short video, I'd like to show the practical aspects of recording jitter with the concentric needle electrode. In the recording of frontalis muscle, I uh, sit behind the patient to get a good overview, and we are going to uh, investigate the left frontalis. I ask for a slight uh, voluntary contraction and insert the needle like this, and we obtain a signal uh, like this, and we can uh, trigger on the highest peak here to get the stable, nice signal and we can uh, move the delay. We can also trigger on the first signal the smaller one there but that will also introduce other uh, other signals so in order to get the clean signal I trigger on the highest. And we see the jitter to the right and a good trick is to superimpose the recordings during uh, uh, the uh, collection of data then we see the jitter much better but when we are going to look at individual traces then we uh, separate them in raster mode i usually use uh, uh, 10 or 15 in this case it is a 10 we superimpose 10 and 10 and we have raster 10 and 10. then we stop here and we read the jitter that is 14.9 uh, microseconds. We insert the needle uh, at another position in the muscle, ask the patient for a slight voluntary contraction, and here is a trip of potential coming. It has relatively high recruitment threshold. There are other motor units that are active in the background. But now we have uh, about 75 discharges and we can stop and get the, uh, the jitter there. With an uh, automatic trigger on the second potential and a jitter of 19.5 and uh, 31.8. And we get another position in the muscle with uh, uh, many components but three are dominating here and we get uh, many signals right away we're triggering on the first one and we see the jitter on number two and number three and we can stop here here we can if we wish change the trigger to the second one or the third one but uh, this was the the best we move the needle again and here we get a, a signal with a very high innovation rate it's, it's going and now we have more than 100 discharges and this is a jitter there is an inflection point here at a, a low part of the signal so this can still be accepted and if i superimpose you see as a good trigger and this part the main part of the signal shows parallel lines here so uh, this is quite Okay, I move the needle and here we get a, a good recording and we have now about uh, 100 discharges and can stop the recording. This big one was a disturbance but you see the, uh, the nice recordings uh, are here and the jitter is 10.7. Then I'm going to show the electric stimulation. I, I move the stimulator a little. I asked the patient to help me write for this demo. And here you see that, that the lower part of the frontalis muscle is moving. Here, here we have here we have nice contractions uh, right here. And it's too much. And then I decrease the stimulus. We uh, <clears throat> now have a seven, six milliamp and then guided by the position of the uh, testing uh, stimulator I now fix uh, a permanent stimulator it can be either a monopolar and a surface electrode it can be a bar electrode or like in this case uh, stick on electrodes
I uh, increase the, the stimulus until I can see a twitching part of the muscle again. And, and here we, 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 we see a twitching part here. In the, um, and I, I insert the needle into the uh, twitching uh, part and, and start to, to record. Here, here are a few spikes. And when I have uh, very little stimulation, they come and go together. So these uh, two come from the same uh, axon. And you can see to the right here that they move, uh, move together. So it's a jitter from uh, both of them. And here uh, I increase the stimulus just a little and we get uh, more, more spikes and even one more is coming in. Now we have uh, three spikes. One is not fulfilling criteria, but we are measuring for the two others. And then I increase the stimulus a little and see whether this large one is becoming more constant. Yes, it did. Here it became more constant. Uh, and here you see that uh, re uh, recording uh, situation. Then I increase the stimulus just a little and uh, more fibers are coming in. You see uh, the, the uh, last ones there. I reduce the, the stimulus just a little and you see these two spikes come and go together. So they are um, belonging to the same axon. Then I, I increase the stimulus a little. I can change the, the sweep speed to, to, to show individual spike. I increase the stimulus just a little and they become more active, but uh, we did not uh, get more uh, fibers here. Here we get a very large uh, complex of signals, too much of stimulation. I increase the sweep speed a little to see better. This is uh, just uh, a large number of axons. So I, I uh, change the stimulus strength and here you see two of the components come and go together. Can you see these two big ones come and go together. I decrease the stimulus strength. I decrease it more and more. For measurements, I, I could say that we want to have uh, uh, just few few spikes. I reduce the, the stimulus. One is showing something that looks blocking, but now we measure between uh, a few different uh, spikes indicated with the uh, markers there. If I increase the stimulus, I'm sure that new spikes are coming in. Yes, and then I reduce the, the stimulus. Here we can measure yet. And you see how they all move uh, together a little because it's yet uh, at the stimulation uh, site. I increase the, the uh, strength a little to make them all more stable. And here they are all very stable. I increase it even more and now they are, are uh, stable. And now we are going to uh, do a recording from the frontalis muscle in a patient with myasthenia gravis. Here you see a nice single fiber recordings. When we superimpose, they are in parallel rising phase here. So this is a good recording and the, the jitter is nicely seen to the right. It amounts to 102 microseconds. At this situation, it is just about to 
can become uh, with blocking but we don't but we don't see any blocking in this particular recording here is another recording in this case with a larger jitter it's around 200 and it shows uh, frequent blocking it is easily seen here but it can also be seen on the superimposition where you see a line through the uh, recording here want to see the, the frequency of the blocking we can uh, browse through the, the whole, uh, whole recording uh, in this way and this blocking is not due to false trigger because the first signal here is absolutely constant in, in shape so it's the second potential that is really um, missing here's another recording with a large jitter a trigger on number two and we see the uh, jittering signal but there are no blocks you see no line through it here and when we inspect the, the, the signals we don't see any blocking uh, at all in this uh, case the jitter is uh, 85 microseconds here is uh, a recording with a high firing rate and the jitter is, is quite uh, large and you see uh, the behavior and you see the behavior here the jitter is uh, about 100 microseconds here is multiple recording with uh, complex uh, uh, signals and we trigger on the uh, second one and when I stop it keeps the second we could have triggered on the first one but then the Samaiti jitter is much larger and uh, therefore we, we go over and trigger on the uh, second one this jitter is 87 and 19 and 36 so in the same motor unit you can have different uh, abnormalities among the motor and plates and now we are recording from the brachioradialis muscle uh, with a slight voluntary contraction triggering on the second signal here's something we call flip-flop and you see the jitter uh, there and then I move the needle again here's another the last one is not a pure signal so we cannot use this that was a, a combined summated signal I move the needle and we see an early small component here's a good recording and now we have 100 uh, we, we stop recording and I try to find a new position here's another the trigger is a little too low so I increase I lift it up a little now we get more stable situation and you see the jitter in, in Now I, I moved the electrode a little, so the second one is the biggest. And here we get the good recording. Um, and then we can superimpose uh, f uh, 15 and you see uh, the, the jitter display there. Okay, the complex signal. And here we have a, a few components that look very nice. And that is enough we got 100 there so i think that is uh, enough for this muscle um, that uh, it is a little more complex than um, the frontalis and it's uh, definitely not as complex as edc or even worse the uh, tibialis uh, anterior muscle 
this is the recording from the extensor digitorum and I insert needle and you see we find a, a signal there the first one is a little irregular and I move the needle to, to get the, a good first component stop and, and then I move to another position the component that is very low in amplitude and I move the needle and we can get it up and we are now recording on a good signal stop we move to another position second component is not interfering with the first peak so this can be uh, used for, for measurements and also we have a late component that is not uh, the violet one that we do not uh, accept this is a recording from the tibialis anterior muscle in a patient with a history of L5 radiculopathy some years ago it will probably show neurogenic changes and this is a demo then of the the neurogenic jitter that we will uh, see here the last component is is jittering And we can see the superimposition uh, at the bottom of, of all 100. And here is the superimposition of only 15 at a time. And we can move that uh, through, through the collected uh, area of signals. This uh, signal, the beginning there, it's not possible to, to measure it. They're very close uh, together. You see the increased theater, but I don't use it. There's one late component coming in. I move the uh, change the delay a little and you see the late component there is blocking This was the end of the practical demonstration of the use of concentric needle electrode for jitter measurements. It's important that we collect high quality data uh, for analysis and do not rely on post-processing editing. Regarding post-processing, it is uh, not it's not feasible to make post-processing or the stimulated uh, SFEMG. All the quality control must be made during ongoing stimulation with changing uh, uh, stimulus strength and so on. For voluntary uh, SFEMG, uh, then the post-processing is mainly uh, uh, aiming at uh, looking at the signal quality by browsing 
uh, through the whole uh, uh, recording. Sometimes uh, special uh, tricks must be made, and I will show you a few examples of that. With voluntary activation, there are a few occasions where it's obvious to get rid of some of uh, the signals, and I'm going to show you a few of those examples. Here's a recording, and we it, it trigger, and the signal is coming down here. And as as you see, there was an uh, electrode movement seen at the bottom of the dot plot here, uh, and this area is obviously uh, erroneous and should be r removed. <clears throat> the jitter now with all dots included is 27.4 but if we restrict the acceptance area uh, going here then we see that the jitter is uh, somewhat lower and in the uh, signal we see this uh, phenomenon you see in the middle part here and then I go down and you see the the transition to the other here, right in this area. So this is removed and we uh, uh, report this GT value. And here is an editing feature that is probably the most common, namely when we have the signals like this and we uh, uh, ha have this situation and we want to remove one trace uh, the whole trace here all traces are nice but for the demonstration I press the trace it becomes blue which means not included and I can also remove just one dot I go to that dot and uh, right click and get it blue the other dots are still active normally the SFEMG recording should be made with very slight contraction. Here we have one with uh, a quite strong contra contraction and therefore other motor units are disturbing. Here we see such a situation where we have activity from adjacent motor units. These are not included in the analysis as you can see there are no indicators, no dots at the top of these signals, so they are not included. Uh, um, and we can also, if we wish, f just for for the clarity to get the signals nice, we can cut these signals like I did here. The jitter value does not change. Here is twenty eight, twenty nine point two and here is about the same it was 29.7 here so uh, and I can do that same thing here we have a jitter of 30.2 and if I remove these signals is uh, 30.1 now it became a little smaller this uh, type of editing is not uh, uh, necessary since the signals are not included and uh, uh, it is not worthwhile spending time on such uh, things. Here is a situation where the visual detection can be very important. You hear a complex signal here and in the overview you can see a, a fourth component and then we need to change the, the sweep speed in order to uh, allow that to be seen in the screen and we can move this over here this has a delay of 15 or more milliseconds and that is usually not used for jitter um, analysis if the uh, if the latency is more than 4 milliseconds the value are not very reproducible uh, in this case it's very low jitter values and this happens to be within normal uh, limits so that uh, can be accepted all these three values can be accepted here here is a situation 
where uh, the uh, visual analysis after the recording is necessary. <coughs> Here I can see this is a patient with myasthenia and you see uh, that uh, the second component is missing now and then and that is a real neuromuscular blocking. If the trigger level had been a little lower I can reduce this to a lower uh, part here. Then we all of a sudden start to trigger on other signals. For example here, this small signal here is the triggering and this looks like a block but that's, that's not true since we did not have uh, any reference uh, potential and it seems as blocking through here and you can from this picture differentiate the real and the technical block but here it is very easy to detect. Now we are going to uh, look at the recording from tibial anterior in a slightly neurogenic muscle. Here is a recording and we uh, uh, have multiple spikes and we trigger on the first uh, low one and you see that the dots are aligned here. When I stop the recording for analysis then it happens to be that the third spike is triggering and that is based on the fact that um, with triggering on uh, different spikes the jitter value for the others will be higher or lower because the, the triggering spike has also a jitter. If we for example see that the jitter is 60, 84, 18 and 34. If I trigger here then we get 91, 84, 87, 71. Very high values. So this uh, has the lowest jitter sum, J sum, uh, and this is automatically indicated here. Uh, this was only a demonstration of that particular feature it has uh, nothing really to do with editing. So once again do not rely on getting a good quality by post-processing. Um, normally the quality is de defined already during the recording itself so that post-processing editing should be kept to a minimal uh, level. Thank you very much for watching.